the gentle viewers, this is Avindian, welcoming you to a new episode of Out of the Park Baseball 18. In the previous episode, we actually came very close indeed to making the World Series. But, I think we've got a chance. We really need to see Philadelphia start to slip a bit. Um, and for that, they either have to lose Lou Gehrig or something. Because we take a look... Gehrig is amazing. D'Alessandro is really, really good. And they just got him. Purchased from JCS. What is JCS? Oh, wow, there's a whole bunch of leagues now. Uh, how many minor league teams do we have now? We now have three. Okay, we're really starting to get somewhere now. Um, so now we have double A, single A, and I believe DE is considered developmental. Um, so right away, I want to make sure I am set that the AI will do promotions and demotions unless I say differently. Uh, control and autoplay. There we go. Yeah, unless I say differently, you do all the promotions and demotions. And everything else here looks fine. Okay. So that's good news because it means we'll be able to have more talent developing at any one moment. Um, one thing, and I know I mentioned this last episode, but it would really make a lot more sense if... I mean, I could always hire someone like Charlie Grimm and just like stick him in AAA. No, he won't take a demotion. He wouldn't even think about it, I don't think. Um, Alright, so you can do promotions or demotions as appropriate. Did McQuinn get any better? He had another pretty good season. I don't deny that, but he's still not. Wow, really? The real-life George McQuinn, was that good? Damn, I wonder why he never made the Hall of Fame. Oh, you know what? A lot of this is minor leagues. Uh, what if we just say major league level? Okay, yeah, that's a far less impressive career. It's a good career, but it's not nearly Hall of Fame worthy. Okay, I feel better now. Um... How did you improve last season? Contact and I both got better in June. So we'll see what happens uh, this season. I wonder why he must just not have changed in August, which is fine. Which is fine. Cool. Right, let's proceed. So we learned a lot already, and I haven't even done anything yet. So I was getting up to what happened last season. Um, switch from training. Boston Red Sox now with the Boston Braves. We're still going to be trapped behind the A's, though, and I don't know what we can do to stop that without getting, like, an amazing trade. So they got Komorowski, who's really good. And, yeah. So, what I was talking about earlier... Because you can buy players from the minor leagues, it would be really awesome as if there was one screen where you could acquire them from. And as far as I know, that option doesn't exist. Um, so, for example, uh, the East-West League. Let's take a look at this one. Now, everything really yourself, wow, there's a whole lot of um, minor league systems now. You'd be right. But... Can I, like, buy, like, a... Can I buy, like... Oh, this is a, um... Negro Leagues. Yeah, there's no way in hell that I'm going to be able to acquire them. Um... International League, I know for a fact, is, um... Associated with minors. PCL should still be independent. Like, individual teams might get picked up. Like a Marv Owen. Is he actually any good, though? Not really. 
Uh, but yeah, there should be an easier way to do this. Central League, no. No. But in case you're wondering, you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, there's a whole bunch of minor leagues. Um, only in like the 60s and 70s did they really start to get condensed into what we think of today. Independent minor league used to be the, the rule rather than the exception. Um, and then what would happen is you would send them money, and then they would give you players. Nah, we can't get Max Butcher. Damn it. Um... And it worked really well until a guy named Brian Tricky, who was a general manager for the Brooklyn Dodgers, and later the St. Louis Cardinals, maybe it was the Cardinals and then the Dodgers, I don't remember the order, um, started basically telling minor leagues, I will pay your salaries out of the major league budget, and in return, all of your players are automatically mine. And more and more minor leagues, because it was very difficult to operate financially, took these deals, and we get the system where we do today. There are still, although they're very difficult to find, a few minor league teams that are independent, like the St. Paul Saints and a couple of others. And we can't buy it. Um, but they're much more unusual, um, and they're not as good as they used to be in the past. Like, for example, Joe DiMaggio started in the independent minor leagues. That's my guy, so obviously this is not one we can buy. Um, and then the Yankees discovered him, and they're like, holy shit, this kid's good. And then they they paid the... What was it, San Francisco Seals? They paid him, like, X dollars, and then they said, I would like you very much to come play for our team. And then he did. So, in any case, a little slice of minor league history for you there. Um, today, of course, it's very, very different. Damn, Spud Chandler looks good, and I can't acquire him. This is really frustrating. Um, I think we actually might be at the point where you can no longer buy minor league players. Which is a real shame, but... Mm. I seriously hope, given how much I've done with historical gameplay and how much fun it is to play in the historical past instead of just the new stuff, I really hope they improve that interface in OOTP19. It should be easy for me to say, I want you, you, and you. I would like to buy you. Come join us on the team. Um, we have a lot of players just don't excite me that much. Bobo Newsom has never developed control, which means he's going to be dodgy at best as a starter. Which is a real shame. Um, I will go ahead and put McQuinn on the minor league raw on the spring training roster, and that's like the only player I'm interested in and in previewing. Maybe Dick Shop. That name still makes me giggle. By the way. Um. Yeah, Dietrich's going to need some time before he's worthy. We're just in this weird scenario where we just don't have much. Do we have, like, three teams? Oh, they must all be in roughly the same area. Yeah, Longview, Texas. That's not very far from where I live. Um, now, anyway. Campbell is really good. Just so good. Um, I'm excited that we got him now. Now, we should probably make some kind of effort to try to find, like, a good base stealer. But unless, like, Bobby Reese is, like, secretly brilliant at it. Okay, he actually is. Um. Yeah, let's actually go ahead and call up Bobby Reese. And then I will let the AI decide how to build uh, the minor league system. That's pretty much how I'd want it because Campbell is such a good defensive player. And then you guys will just say the same as you were last season. I'm not going to mess with that. All right, let's finish spring training. Actually, I don't think spring training started until the late 40s. I think it started around World War II. 
Charlie High uh, strained his ACL, which is, if I remember correctly, it's I believe it's the one that goes from your knee to the top of the um, femur, but I won't swear to that. Um, I'm a history doctor, not a medical doctor. You probably shouldn't let me prescribe you medication. Um, 15 day DL for you. Continue on. We're doing well in spring training for what it's worth. And what it's worth is nothing. It's spring training. Um, it's even less useful than the preseason and, and football. Because at least, so in American football, you have the preseason, so you can learn new playbooks. You can develop chemistry with people. In baseball, it doesn't really matter. Spring training is really there just to get you used to playing again. Um, it's most useful for, um, I almost said AIs, for managers to decide, okay, I've got two really good shortstops. I want to see who's going to be the best. Let's go from there. And then we see what happens. We did pretty well in spring training. I mean, I don't know what that means for us, but... You know, so what is your expectation this season? You want me to make the playoffs this season? That's going to be dodgy. I don't know that I can sit there with a straight face and tell you, yes, that's going to happen. Jesus Christ, Cleveland. Johnny Mize. The White Sox ended up with Joe DiMaggio. Okay. Just from San Francisco Seals in 1931. Why didn't I have that option? That's what I find so frustrating. It's not clear who's independent and who's not. Um, yeah, that's the PCL, is the San Francisco Seals. And yet, if I take a look at the teams, if I take a look at the players, there we go. There's no indications here of who's available to buy and who isn't. Could I buy Monty Pearson? No. Why not? Who knows? Portland is affiliated. San Francisco is still independent. And see, that's not clear. That needs to be made crystal clear because it's a very important way to pick up players. Like, I could just buy Frankie Crossetti knowing that in real life he's actually pretty decent. But in this game, he's not so great. He's a really good defensive player, though, but it's not worth the amount that they want. Um, that's just something I'd like to see them improve. It should be, it should be obvious at a glance who is and who isn't independent. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on the seals, I guess. Um, right. So let's get our roster set. We only need to two people, and I bet they'll both have to be position players. Yeah, because we've got seventeen. Uh, McQuinn's an obvious answer. I don't really have a spot for him. And then it's either probably going to be Borelli or Reese. Uh, neither one of you is ever going to get much better. Borelli at least hits for power. Borelli's clearly the better hitter, but Reese offers speed, which we don't currently have. I think it has to be Reese, though. For now, it has to be Reese. And we'll see what happens later on. I'm sorry, that still kind of bugs me. That it's hard to see who is and who isn't available. Right. Um. Except for this nonsense here, I'm actually going to leave this as is. Um, I'm not going to change the lineup because the lineup worked really well for us last season. Wow, Campbell is a number three hitter. He's got really good contact. And it's probably better than Sizzler. No, Sizzler is still the best. Um, Campbell's got really good power. So we're going to do Sizzler, then Campbell, then Fonseca. Um, all that looks fine, and again, you know what, we're just going to do this over again. 
Um, I don't like that the AI likes to do this weird, let's every 10 days play this player. Um, that's great if you've got a lot of young players that you want to get development time to. But we don't really have that right now. So we got Sizzler, we got Bishop. Dressen was a little disappointing last season. He was still useful. But given what we're paying him, I'd like more offensive production out of him. How did he do defensively last season? A little bit below average, but he's still probably the best choice at third base. Um, let's go to ratings, please, not stats. English at short. English is actually starting to top out now. He's still really amazing, um, but he's not the elite player he once was. Okay. Uh, backups. Uh, I think Chapman is still the best defensive first baseman. You know what? Lindstrom's not bad. Let's actually have Lindstrom play first. Because Lindstrom can actually kind of sort of hit, and Chapman can't. Uh, you'll back up at third, and you'll be my defense sub at both positions. Because I'm sure Sizzler is slipping as a first baseman. It's usually one of the first things to go. There we go. Um... Sizzler's probably only got like another two or three seasons um, before he starts to decline. And Lindstrom's a good backup at second. There we go. Um, Borelli's mostly going to be a pinch hitter because I just don't have a spot for him on the team. Chapman will back up at short. Uh, Mosolf can play in left. Jensen in center, Daniels in right. And right now there's no one I'm really interested in developing because everyone is at their potential or above except for Moslov. And I'm not going to bench Fonseca because it would actually hurt our chances to win, to make the playoffs. Um, so I'm not going to do any of the stuff the AI likes to do. Um, I would like, how did Campbell, Campbell's actually now a brilliant right fielder. Perfect. Um, I don't need to worry about playing you in a certain position anymore. You kind of sorted that out for yourself. Depth chart, paste. I'll just drop in Saltscaver again so it populates the lineup. Always going to be Bishop leading off. Always going to be English hitting second. You don't want to be hard of the order. You're middle of the lineup. You might be a little bit irritated with me if I keep you in at that position. If I keep you hitting second, but hopefully you're going to accept the fact that you're still getting a crap ton of at-bats. Sizzler's number three. Campbell's cleanup. Fonseca hits fifth. And then I think Schulte, and then Dressen, and then Saltzgaver. I think this is the best lineup for us. Um, You might be asking, why am I still putting Sizzler as the number three hitter? Because the best contact hitter is still Sizzler. And the most important thing the third baseman has to do is be in a position to make the most out of his... Oh, that said, in every other way, Campbell is better. Nope. I'm switching it. Campbell's going to be the new number three hitter. I have no idea. <clears throat> That's his worst eye was dropping, which means he's not going to draw as many walks, which are an important part of his value. Not to the same extent that they are for Bishop. Where Bishop will be my leadoff hitter until he drops dead. Um, yeah, we're actually going to hit Campbell as a three hitter. Because even though Sizzler hits for more contact, in every other respect, Campbell is the better hitter. And there's not a lot of debate about that. So yeah. Um, Sizzler's probably on the way out. I would venture he's maybe got one more season, maybe two, of elite-level play. Um, we've got so much money that I don't care if we're playing, paying his salary. I care if he's actually playing the position well. So, okay, lineup is set. Pitching staff sh should be pretty much the same as it was last year. That's fine. Yeah, let's do it. I know this is a little bit more set up in this episode than you might be used to, but there were some tricky decisions to make there. Charlie Ahai is eligible to come back. That's really good news. I think we get rid of Pete Daniels. 
I'm sorry, mate. You had your chance, and you just really irritated me. So Charlie High will be the new backup right fielder. Did I trade for him, or did I sign him at some point? I think I traded for him. No, I signed him. Okay. So one way they might be able to fix the independent league problem is group them all into free agents. Just have one giant free agent screen where I can look and see, oh, these players are available. Um, 2,000 hits for Simmons. That's pretty cool. Stupid Johnny Mize. Actually, Johnny Mize is actually not having a great season. No and no. What was I checking on? Yeah, I wanted to see if maybe... They're not an international amateur. They're not going to be posted. Upcoming FAs? No. No one is signing Charlie Grimm. I mean, he's definitely a part-time player at this point, but he's still got something to offer. That's kind of a tragedy. It should just be a lot easier to do that. And I will promise I won't say it again, unless I do. Um, sorry. It's these damn athletics. I'm in this weird situation. Oh, um, I can't afford to lose English long term. So what we're going to do, and I haven't actually done this in this series for a long time. I'm going to bench you for two weeks. Ooh. Oh, is this a new addition? That's amazing. I don't remember that being in the game before. So if someone's really important, I can put things like, if severity is at least moderate, don't play him. <gasps> that's great. I wonder if they added that. If so, that's a really good idea. Because it gets irritating doing that. Ah, damn it. That's probably our season right there. That's really rough. Shit. Um, Ortman can't throw strikes. But it's hard for me to come up with another pitcher, so... Uh, I'm just going to bump everyone up just because it's easier for me to remember who the ace is if he's number one. Our rotation this year is dog shit. That's probably why we're not doing nearly as well this season. French and Thomas are doing well. Harder's having some real problems, as is Schaffner, and now Ortman. We'll see what happens. Um, <clears throat> Frey Lindstrom wants to play every day. But the thing is, you've never, you only ever hit well in one season. And in two consecutive seasons, you got a load of playing time and played poorly. So you can be unhappy if you want to be. I am not going to give you playing time. We'll see if you become a distraction. If you do, I will trade you. Straight up. I will trade you for anything at all I can get. Yeah, we're really mediocre this season. There's freaking Philadelphia again. Okay, minimal effect I'm not going to mess with. I should really take a couple of minutes to go through and just set some of that priority for the most important players. But that is really cool. Really cool. I don't care about Sizzler at this point. Um, I mean, I do care about him. Yeah, we're going to be competitive this season. Ortman's out for two freaking weeks. I literally just promoted you, jerk. Um, sure, let's just bring up every minor leaguer with even a marginal chance of pitching well. Yeah, Newsom's actually the best choice. Which is really crap. We're just burning through pitchers. Okay, Harder and Schaffner are both balancing out a little bit. That's good news. 
I think that's part of the reason we're on a bit of a hot streak right now. But still, it feels really weird to say this, but I hope Lou Gehrig gets hurt. He's powering that team. He's been ridiculous. But who may be traded? Is it someone I care about? Bissonette. You're a first baseman. I have no desire for you, no. There's Mel Ott. Got some all-star voting going on. Ooh, Bruce Campbell. Nice. That's even without a boomstick. Um, he's a pretty great player. We'll go up to the all-star game. I just want to take a quick look at the roster, and then we'll continue. Orman, go back to AAA. Or AA. Sorry, we don't have a AAA team yet. How's Newsom handling the majors? About as well as you'd expect. We have so many pitchers that just don't have any control. Just some, Oh, that was a problem with Ortman. I completely forgot. Ortman has absolutely no stamina. Hmm. Uh, Larry French, all-star appearance. Tommy Thomas, all-star appearance. Jim Turner, all-star appearance. Max Bishop. Lou Fonseca and Bruce Campbell. Nice. But I mean, Philadelphia got off to such a hot start without a serious injury. I don't see us being able to make up this gap. I just don't think it's possible. Which really sucks. Um... Yeah, I don't want Paul Wayner. Jakey Mays are covering well. That'll help the team, actually. Yeah, we're just in this weird... As long as there's only one playoff spot, unless we get really lucky, it's going to be Philadelphia's. Because Lou Gehrig is so much better than any other hitter in the American League. Oh, we just lost Sizzler for five weeks. And Silver was actually hitting pretty well this season, too. Um, but yeah, you gotta go on the DL, my friend. Where's McQuinn? You kicked McQuinn down to A? Why? I know the kid's only 22, but he held his own in triple A. Or double A. I'm going to keep saying AAA. I'll probably get it wrong. It's got to be McQuinn. He's the only player I've got that I trust to play first base. I mean, I guess we could just make Lindstrom the everyday first base. But Lindstrom's a crappy hitter. At least McQuinn hits fairly well. So yeah, we will put McQuinn in here. And then we're going to take a lot of pressure off. I'm going to bat him sixth. And we'll do the same in this lineup too. I am not letting him bat clean up. And we'll see how he does. Getting Jakey May back is wonderful news. Oh, he must just keep getting skipped in the rotation. That's fine. <laughs> There's no way I'm not pitching my ace, so... You can be a Schaffner will pitch today, and then May will get come back tomorrow. Actually, the rotation's really balanced out quite nicely. We're getting a lot from Mel Harder. A lot more than I thought we would. Um, and Schaffner's even doing very well in his first full season in the majors. His second full season, actually. Yeah, he's had enough innings pitch. He's not technically a rookie anymore. Ear infection for Max Bishop. That's fine. We're going to set our first rule. Campbell is so critical to our offensive efforts. If it's moderate, bench him. We have to set it that way. I am i don't even want him as a, P, as a pinch hitter. He's too important to the long-term team success. There's Charlie High, but he's a... Oh, shit. You're going to have to play Woody Jensen there or something. I don't care. Dick Shot, I think, will be ready another season. You are not a starter. 
I'm going to trade Ortman. I don't think I'm ever going to find a spot for him on my team. If I can get... Oh, yeah. Derp. Derp, derp, derp. Trading deadline's on October. We're catching up, but I just don't know. Uh, we're doing really well. Technically, it's more than half an hour already. We're going to play to the end of the season. Um, Schulte's out day to day. It's minimal effect. This is the playoff stretch run. I don't care how injured you are. If you can play, you will play. We're toying with them. We're bouncing back and forth. Is it something important or is it Lindstrom whining again? Sizzler, damn it. Um, oh, let's check personnel super quick. It is 32. I want all my minor league people to get extensions. It's just easier. One thing I like to do, and you've probably seen this, you've been watching me for a while, is I like to promote from within with coaches. Um, so if I get a really good coach, I tend not to want to let them go. Hmm... This is super tense. We're actually in first place, and we've got just like the tiniest sliver of a lead right now. Is it Sizzler setting back again? Oh, here we go. Fred Deviney retired. I don't even know who you are, mate. So... I don't care if your ankle sprained. This is all hands on freaking deck. Oh, no! Oh, this is some bullshit. Oh, no, we're in first again. We're in first by half a game. To maximize drama. We've got a double header. Oh, and Philadelphia just won. We need to sweep Detroit. Who is Philadelphia playing? should tell me right here. They're playing the Senators, and the Senators are actually really bad this season. If we win, we earned it. Finish today. We split. Which I think means we just... No, we're not eliminated. If we win and Philadelphia loses, we have a tie record. Come on... We lost. Damn it! So the stupid athletics make the damn playoffs again. And Sizzler's not ready to come back. You absolute bastard. Ugh. Oh. The frickin' Tigers. That was pure strength of schedule at the end there. The A's got to face the worst team in the, net in the American League. And we had to face one of the best. Uh, we have a new owner. Oh no. Um, new goals. Wants you to reach a playoffs upgrade and breach the World Series. So Steve Mann, what kind of owner is Steve Mann? We'll actually end the episode after I take a look at my new owner. He wants extreme profit, he's hands-off, and he's an economizer, so he's actually going to start crunching me on salary. But I am nowhere near the salary. I don't know why the budget is so huge, to be honest. I can't think of a single major league team that had a million-dollar payroll before, like, the 1960s. Ooh, Bruce Campbell won a batting title. That almost makes up. Arrgh. Damn it, Lou Gehrig. Uh, George McQuinn won MVP in double A. That's pretty exciting. Man. All right, that's it for this episode, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you know what to do at this point. And this is of Indian. And I bid you good day, but not the Philadelphia Athletics. They can go take a flying leap.